Are you? Oh, I have to hit the. Uh, continue. I have to give my consent. I consent. Okay, Anna is consenting, folks. Uh, Anna, are you familiar with the song "Life by the Drop"? No. Stevie Ray Vaughan song. Yeah, you know, he wrote he. You know, after he got sober and he cleaned up a lot and the whole thing, he he had a lot of songs like that. He used to preach a little bit during his shows. I, I'll never forget um, a jazz and heritage festival down in New Orleans around '88. I think he was there and he was cleaned up and. He would like in the middle of one of the songs, he would just do, give a little a little sermon and the crowd didn't mind because as soon as he was done with that little sermon, he would go right into just some kind of wailing solo. And uh, you could probably find that online. Look, look for Jazz Fest. I want to say around 88 and you'll see what I'm talking about. Uh, he, the guy was pretty amazing. And I started thinking about it today. It's like, wow, we're coming. Every time August comes around, I used to think about football, you know, that fresh cut grass, knowing August practice is getting ready to start. And you're going into those hellacious two weeks of two a days. When I got to college, we had three a days. I'm not kidding about that. And uh, the incredible thing is uh, at some point it switched over. For me, every time August comes around, I think about the late, great Stevie Ray Vaughan taken way too soon. The guy cleaned up his life. He was doing really well. He had fallen in love. His music was better than ever. And the next thing you know, kind of like Kobe Bryant, there was a helicopter, there was some fog, and there was a mountain involved. Just don't go in helicopters. Can we just yeah. not do that? Listen, folks, if somehow you get rich and famous, and there's a helicopter, and there's fog, and there's a mountain anywhere near you, don't get in. Just, That's take, not just your best. go, go in your car like the rest of us. Yeah, look, I mean, had he gone in the car that, you know, because he was so famous, he got the last seat on one of, I think there was two or three helicopters that left. It was right after a concert. Uh, I want to say it was up in Michigan or somewhere around there. It was somewhere up in the Northeast. And uh, it was kind of a benefit concert type thing. I want to say Eric Clapton. It was a lot of great guitar heroes on that stage. And they said, you know, he was that was the best. They had never seen Stevie Vaughn. It was it was haunting how good he was. And at the last minute, there was an, an extra seat on a helicopter and it was a seat to uh, to heaven, as they would say. And uh, yeah, it, you know, they took off and a few minutes later, just rammed right into a oh, mountain because Jesus. of the fog. Uh, that's as best I can remember the story. I'm sure people are going, that's not exactly how it happened, but it happened something to that degree. And um we lost one of one of the greats. And uh, I don't know why we, you and I were doing a clubhouse earlier. Mm -hmm. And we were Thanks talking for joining, to, by the way, that was awesome. What, what was that keto group called? Anna, that you I were think hosting? it's just called the keto club. The keto and I'm, club. I'm hosting, uh, you know, I do a regular clubhouse every Monday in the eat happy club. But if you follow me, you'll you'll on clubhouse, you'll you'll get notified. But I, I'm doing Thursdays in July, Thursday, every Thursday from five to 6 PM Eastern. And so I'm doing a room and maybe I'll have, maybe you could come back in a couple of weeks. Would love to. I, I, I felt it was, uh, I, 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 I was very grateful that you um, said, Hey, I'm doing a clubhouse. Would you like to join me? I'm like, yeah, yeah. I it's like fun because you and I like going on the fly and you know, it was funny because the lady who introduced us, Erica, it's her room and she's, she does all the PR and all that stuff and runs all these things. And, and good for her for built. She's built that club up to seventeen thousand people, and and uh, she was messaging me before the thing. She's like, "Okay, here's how it's gonna go, and if you have any questions or if you get stuck or you can't answer anything, message me here. Let me know." I'm like, "No, <laughs> we're gonna be fine." Yeah, I, I was I like, "Thank you, understand, Erica. thank you." But um, Vinny and I have heard and seen it all in all yeah. these years, and she was warning me about like people might come up and be trolls, and I was like. It's fine, even if they great. are. We'll, we we great. love trolls. We love it. We love no it. One, no one gets trolled online more than us. This is true. And this uh, is true. So it yeah, was really it, fun. It, it's amazing how that works. You know, the, the other day, some guy was like uh, on Twitter. He was like, hey, man, uh, I, I tried to order something from NSNG Foods and it never came in. You know, that's, that's my ultra fat product. That's uh, this product right here. It's, you know, just fat in an envelope that you eat. And it's delicious. And uh, he's like, I don't know, man. I tried calling and called and wrote. No one's getting back to me. I don't know. I, 
I wonder if Corolla knows that you're running that kind of scam. Yeah, just some kind of bullshit email, a text, and not text, uh, Twitter. And I went, this doesn't sound right. So I immediately called Andy and I said, Andy, here's the guy's name. Is he anywhere in our system? Can we please help him? Andy goes, that guy doesn't exist. But the NSNG oh. army got to him first and said, dude, whenever I've had a problem, I call there, they answer the phone right away. They yeah. don't mess around. They fix things. They get it straight. And yeah, we had a little breakdown uh, over at NSNG Foods. The equipment broke down and, and it took us a while to get it running. But we wrote to everyone and said, hey, your order is going yeah. to be back a little bit. We're giving you a big discount because that happened because yeah. you're still waiting for your order. We'll give you your money back. But hey, how about a 25% discount? Basically, we were losing money at that point, but they were still right. getting their product and we were just trying to do good faith. And that's what you have to do when you're in business. You know, you, you try to help people along and that's what we did. But this guy, we couldn't find him in the system. And uh, Kevin Biggs and a couple of the other guys came to the rescue and said, hey, no, no, no. What you're saying is just not true with this company. Yeah. They, they answer every phone call. So, you know, I don't know who this guy is. Uh, we couldn't find him in the system. But you want to talk about trolls, man. We, <laughs> we get them. <laughs> We've been doing this, you know, Anna and I have been doing this for 10 years. 10 years, Anna? How long? Almost. Nine and a half years. Yeah. Call yeah, it. And I, th I feel early like we learned the right to round up. Yeah, we're at 10 years. Screw mm -hmm. it. And, and look, the bottom line is this. We, when we started out, we would read the, you know, the iTunes comments and the whole thing. And Anna yeah. would call me and go, oh, no, we, we, we pissed off somebody. It's like, <laughs> OK, so we pissed no, off no, one no, person. No, no. What about... I didn't say that we pissed off somebody. I'm paraphrasing. They, they would yeah. say they hated me. And I was like, I don't like reading these. They hurt my feelings. <laughs> and then you were like, don't read them or don't yeah. let it hurt your feelings. And I was like, yeah, I don't know. Somebody saying they hate me, even though they're a stranger, it still bothers me. I haven't quite got over that, but not as much. Yeah, you know, Dr. Drew asked me one time because Dr. Drew gets butt hurt every time someone says something bad about him. You oh, would think I don't a guy with, but I'm like, hey, that's not nice. You would think a guy with the number of years Drew has would, you know, would just be fine with it, right? And yeah, some people they just take it to heart. And he said to me one time, he goes, "How do you handle that?" I was like, "Dude, I'd walk out. You know, we we would we would be waiting underneath the the corridor to run out when I played ball at Tulane and." You know, you're standing there in a car door bunched up with 60 other football players and your fans would be yelling, hey, Tartarich, you fucking suck, bro. You suck. You know, That's pretty fan, rough. Right. And you're sitting there going, really? You got nothing better to do. You know, what are you going to do? Throw a beer bottle at me? I got a helmet on. Come on. You can't hurt me. Tartarich, you suck. But they would say that about every. I Jesus. Mean, oh, I know. Oh, I know. You know, no matter who, hey, Lichtenstein. But, but to be fair, you were also like, hey, read these reviews on the air. And then I was reading, I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> they are talking about how much they hate me. I was like, I don't want to. Can we not do that you, segment anymore? I told you one time. Anna, <laughs> Let's read about how many people hate Anna. I, I, I told you one time, I said, if you want to feel better about yourself, go read my bad book reviews. You know, just, yeah. yeah. And look, I, I'm sure my book has been reviewed a gazillion times. And it's got yes. like a 4.7 or 8% rating, yeah, which means guess what? That's, that's a literal 10 years down the road. That's a literal five star, you know, yeah. anyone that's coming in and showing hate well, is some propaganda and, from, you know, some vegan with a, with an well, agenda. The other thing him. is no book can have just the perfect rating. There's you're going to hit people sometimes at the wrong time and, or whatever, it's not going to resonate and that's okay because it makes your books seem more real because now we're so savvy to reviews. We think that uh, if we read a bunch of five-star reviews, we're like, mm, well, that's not true. There's gotta be a, have you ever clicked on the negative reviews of a book just to see what people are saying or like negative Yelp reviews in a restaurant? Cause you want to be able to see like, oh, that person just has an ax to grind or like, is there a real complaint there or not? And uh, you can generally kind of learn a lot about the reviewer when, when you're reading them, but your books, I understand can't have, nothing can have a perfect review. I get that. I'm going to tell you when I quit using um, uh, Yelp and it was before I was doing anything on the Yelp internet. is horrible. That's a terrible analogy. Yeah, he, he, let, while, let me tell but... you why I, I, I didn't use Yelp from around 2007 or so. I think Howie Mandel or someone said, Hey man, you, you should, or I think Alex Mandel, actually uh, his son, he said, Hey man, you should be on Yelp. You should put yourself on Yelp. And I'm like, what is oh, that? For again? your training? 
Yeah, when I was still training people. Oh, yeah, I can and, see that. I'm and cutting and an like, onion for the chicken, by the way. Yeah, I gotta get busy. Yeah, you, you get, get busy, busy over there. I'm, I'm going to yip yap and you get busy. You yip yap, but I'm going to have to explain at a certain point because. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll, we'll get into it. We'll talk about what okay. you're doing over there, but start, start preparing because I need to eat that chicken before the end of the show. Yeah, um, yeah Alex Mandel said, get, get on Yelp, get on. And then Howie goes, yeah, yeah, get on Yelp. I got on Yelp and then I went to all my clients and I said, hey, can you write a review for me on Yelp? Right. Right. And I don't know what I expected to get out of what, what regular normal people are going to come and find Hollywood's trainer. You know, I didn't know why I was doing it, but they, I didn't understand the internet. I still don't really understand it. <laughs> and um, I went, Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'll get on Yelp. So I think Alex helped me put it together. And, and um, I had all these great reviews because I asked all my clients to go to Yelp and say, Hey, you know, say whatever you want to say about me, good, bad, or otherwise. Just go write something on us. I bet. I, can I tell you what happened? Can I make go a prediction? On. Yeah. Yelp, yeah go Yelp on. took them down. Yelp, took, Yelp su suppressed the good reviews. They suppressed every review. So I contacted Yelp. That was back oh, in good days. luck with that. No, that was back in days when you can get someone on the phone. Oh, wow. Well. And I got someone on the phone and said, hey, look, you know, uh, my clients wrote these reviews about me and the whole thing. And uh, I'm just trying to figure out you, you guys pulled them all down. There was like 30 great reviews there. And the woman goes, Oh, let me look into this and see what's going on. And she looks into it. And she looks and she's going, Oh, yeah, I see what the problem is. And I said, Okay, well, what's what's the issue? And she goes, uh, Yeah, we, uh, we looked into you. And it turns out because our algorithm shows that you actually know those people. So we're guessing that that was friends of yours that wrote these reviews and we want real reviews. And I said, listen, pumpkin, um, I'm a personal trainer. Let, let, let's make the operative word here. Personal, personal. That means I know these people. I personally know these people. I go to their homes and train them. And uh, that's why they know who I am. They actually use my service, right? Therefore, that they wrote the review. So your algorithm was absolutely right. I know everyone who wrote a review for me because they use my service of me going to them. Right. I've been through cancer with some of these people. I've been through pregnancies with these people. I've seen their kids start first grade. I've seen some of them graduate high school and college. I've right. known some of these people for a long time. Of course, I know my clients. And she goes, yeah, yeah, but it shows that you know him and it's probably, I said, Do, are you hearing a word I'm saying right now? And then she goes, well, you know, we have a thing uh, that you can do. Uh -huh. um, and it involves paying Yelp. Yeah, paying Yelp. That's and right. then, they'll, then they'll say good things about me. It's like, so, okay. So that, this, that, that, no, if you pay Yelp, they will unsuppress those reviews magically. Yeah, so- yeah, to, to do it organically and get people to write real re reviews. You don't want that. Right. But if I pay you, you will then show the reviews. That's so true. this is this is not organic at all. This is bullshit. And I learned a lot that day. I learned a lot about the Internet. I learned a lot about the way they, they do mm -hmm. what they do. And mm -hmm. um, look, I've been fighting an uphill battle on the Internet since I've been on. They've decided they don't like people who tell people how to lose weight, get off of five different drugs, lower their A1Cs to where they're not in uh, type 2 diabetics anymore, get rid of fatty liver disease, lose their gut, lose hundreds of pounds in the process. Nobody on the Internet is interested in that. They're interested in lies. That's why at the beginning of every show, I still say your good intentions have been stolen. I'm going to do everything I can to help you get them back. I really mean that. Yeah. That's what we're doing here. Um, Anna, you're over there cooking a bit. I got uh, a chicken here. And this looks bigger on camera than it actually is. This is a, uh, I'm a, I'm a CSA member at a local farm. Yeah. Meaning they, they butcher their animals. And once a month you get a little package of meats. And I got a chicken. I got, I actually got goat meat. I got to get ground goat. I got to figure that out, what I'm going to do with that. I got ground beef. I got lamb. I got just chicken and I got eggs. And nice, happy pasture. You can see them on Instagram and 
click like, and then, you know, you're eating them the next day. By the way, if you want to do that, if you don't think you have local farms, you should Google uh, local CSA near me. That's how Lauren found them. Motley Crew Farms up here. So now you have to play Motley Crew. Yeah, uh, well, not what uh, maybe at the end. Maybe girls, at the end. Girls, girls, girls. So here, let me tell you guys what I did. That strip. Girls, girls, girls. This girl right here, I uh, took her and uh, out of the package and you can save the, the giblet and the heart and the liver and make a, a little gravy out of it. You can make, keep it for the broth, but you wanna take those out. And I literally just rinse this thing off and dab it dry with a shit ton of paper towels. It's a little bit messy. And earlier in the day, I took a thing of salt. You can use your, your Redmond Real Salt. I've used the Hanes iodized sea salt, doesn't matter to me. And I poured some on the inside and then rubbed it on the outside and did what's called a dry brine. All it does is it makes the, the thing nice and juicy and you don't have to season it that much when we're actually prepping it. So this, is, this recipe, by the way, is in my first cookbook in Eat Happy. It's called The Easiest Roast Chicken. And it's because I did that because I've been roasting a chicken for decades now. And people always tell me they're afraid, first of all, to touch the raw chicken. Look, I'm touching it, Vinny. I'm touching it. Oh, that's so massaging, sexy the way you touch it. Massaging the chicken. Yeah. Don't, don't be afraid. Listen, we're going to eat the dead animal. You need to be able to touch the dead animal and work yeah. with the dead animal and cook the dead animal. I'm not asking you to butcher anything. I'm not asking you to do, just be okay with the dead animal. Yeah. So people are afraid to touch the dead But then they also are like, well, I always, I overcook the breast and then undercook this thing. I don't know what to do. This recipe is foolproof. And one of the tricks is to put it in a smaller roasting pan instead of doing a giant roasting pan like you do a turkey in. And so you see, I just cut onions and just laid it. Yeah, I just laid it out. All I'm gonna do is this. I put the chicken on the onions, boom. That's it. Yep, and now I'm gonna do some things to prep the chicken. Um, number one, when you prep a chicken, Vinny, I don't know if you know this, same thing with a turkey. And by the way, when you roast a turkey, exact same steps, you just cook it longer. Right. You see that all this skin right here, you see all that? Mm, yeah. The you labia. Very, mm -hmm, you can very easily, it's separate. It's basically the, the fascia, right, of the chicken. You can yeah. separate this right here and put pats of butter and shove pats of butter all the way down. Good idea. Really? Mm-hmm. See, that's my finger there. Put pat the butter all your the fingers way down. Going. Folks, you got to go to you got to go watch this video. You got to go to YouTube and see me finger this chicken. She is fingering the crap out of that chicken. That's right. So I'm She's not like gonna a do 16 butter year old at one. the prom. That's right. I'm not going to do butter on this one. But you somebody just posted one in my group and she she must put an entire stick of butter split between both things. And I was so proud. I was so I proud. I don't know. If, Serena is an incredible cook. I don't know if she does that. By the way, shove the butter up in, but I'm going to, I'm going to instead just rub the whole thing with Villa Cali olive oil, but I'm going to take lemons because I love a lemon herbal chicken and I'm going to take lemons and just shove it. It's lemon slices and just shove it in the butt. How much are you putting in there? How many, is that a whole? Uh, I think, you got no, tons I'll probably of do like two or three slices. Um, and then I'm going to save, no, it's probably like two thirds of a lemon. Right. And then I'm going to, I got some fresh basil here. I've already washed it. Possibly co, as my grandmother would call it. Uh -huh. I have a couple of sprigs. Whatever fresh herbs you have on hand in the garden, I have basil and cilantro. So this is going to be real yummy. Yeah. I'm going to do a little basil, a little cilantro. I don't, I didn't rip off any thyme or rosemary, but that's fine. And literally just shove it in the butt so it sticks out. See how cute that is? Yeah. And then for me, if you want to, you can truss it up, meaning tie it with kitchen string. Right. You don't have to, you don't have to honestly let more air get in between here because generally that's the raw part is the thigh. Yeah. So I kind of leave it open and let the air get in there. And uh, I'm going to rub this with Villa Capelli olive oil, do salt and pepper once more on it and it's ready to go in the oven and it will be perfectly seasoned because I dry brined it earlier in the day. So nice. I'm going to do that. Do you want to talk about something or do you want me to ask the, the, the Bob Zimmer ketosis question? I want to talk about Bel Campo. Uh, you Ooh. were talking about the local farm. We also we have mm -hmm. Polyface farm near me, and we do get stuff from Polyface because we use so much meat around here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> but mm -hmm. I get an I order. It. I get an order uh, twice a month from Bel Campo. Hell just yeah. like you guys, folks. I'm just like you guys. I 
I call there, I make an order, and it does the same thing. We order yep. from Del Campo and we put in the promo code. You may know that uh, for a couple of months, I stayed very quiet about it. Bel Campo, they were kind of asleep at the wheel and yeah. they kept this 20% discount going. And the idea behind that 20% discount was, hey, we're losing money, but we're hoping to get people into the big top. They'll come back and shop again. That's just good business. Right. Uh, at some point, they figured out, hey, yeah. we, can't, we can't just keep giving you people 20%. I was even te teaching you guys how to cheat the people who pay for this show. It's like, hey, go find your neighbor's computer, all the stuff for them. Because I was doing that. I went I went to the, the people next door, the McNerney's and said, hey, you know, <laughs> you need to order something. So at any rate, uh, they said, hey, we need to drop you down to a 10% discount. I said, no can do. No can do. And they said, okay, 12.5. I said, give me 15. Give me 15. So if you put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, Every single time you go to Bell Campbell, you'll get 15% off your entire order. If after the discount, you're over $100, we're actually over $99, you will also get free shipping. Uh, Anna, I made an order the other day, it was over $200. So I saved $30 with promo code Vinny, V-I-E, no one be why, mm -hmm. and free shipping. I probably, on that much meat, I probably saved $45. I could not go to my local butcher. I could not go to Polyface and get that meat at that price. No, mm -hmm. it can't, can't be done. No, cannot be done. Plus, you know, you got to drive there. You know, it's the gas and there's time and everything. This shows up right at my door, 15% off plus Amazing. free shipping, saved a ton of money. Bellcampbell.com for all of your meat needs. They also have chicken. Anna, you, you could have gotten that chicken from Bell Campbell. I know. And, I know. Um, so go check out what they're doing. Anya Fernald and company really do a great job. Bell Campo, B-E-L-C-A-M-P-O, bellcampo.com. It's summer and y'all be, better be getting that brisket because I got their brisket. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It was so good. And I got the standing rib roast for Christmas. It was so good. And uh, you know what? Bill's just going to have to cut this out because I, I just can't hang on to this until the end of the show. What's amazing about this song I've never seen the video before because, as you know, I'm not a video guy. It's it's in the strip. They're in the strip joint. Yeah. You know, they, they talk about their place on the Sunset Strip. Uh, you know, I, that place is is iconic. It's been there forever. Yeah. You know, um, never. Well, my been oven's there. preheated. So real quick, I put the chicken caddy corner because I want all those juices to drip down onto the onions and make the onions nice and soft, right? Yeah. This thing will cook for about an hour to an hour and 15 minutes, but I'm putting it on 425 for about the first 20 minutes, then I'll turn it down because I want to blast this skin. Now, you see, I put some lemon slices on there. Yeah. I, I like to put some lemon on the outside. And what'll generally happen is it'll kind of melt off and the skin will cook, but if not, it'll stay on and then you just take it off and when you're done. Um, so I'm putting this in. And then I got to put a timer on because if I don't put a timer on, it'll be, oh no, I got to move down my, sh I got to move down my shelf. Oh, uh, Anna. <sighs> Vinny. I've always thought you would be work the next. work is never done. I thought you would be the next Yada, but I don't think so. No, I would, my assistant didn't move down my shelf. I am my assistant. Yeah, I was, I thought your assistant was maybe Lauren, your husband. No, no, it's just me. What is in here that's like, what is in here? Ellie, you know what I like about what you're doing there? You got two, different, you got two different color um, uh, mitts on. Yeah, I can't. That, that's real that. cooking. You, you, you know, you don't see that with Paula Dean. You don't see that with, with uh, De La Renta. No. You don't see that with uh, Yummers. What's her name? Oh, Yum. No. Um, Yummo. Got it. it look, Anna, Anna's the real deal. Look at Anna. Show that. You got two different color mitts on. She, that, that's real cooking there, folks. She's not messing around. The thing she, that sucks is that now my oven was preheated, but I had to open it to change the thing. So now it's not preheated. So well, you got I'll some heat put left on 20 there, minutes. right? Yeah, but it lets, it really does let it out when you do it that yeah. way. But let me, where's my timer? I'm just going to walk around. Anna, Anna's busy over there. She's just running back and forth. I'm very, very busy. Oh, here it is. What do you got in that bowl, Anna? Lauren went to the farm stand just now and he got some green beans and he got some zucchini. Wait, Anna, I got a problem. Mm -hmm. I got a problem. 
You know, look, I'm with you. I, I like to touch the meat and move around with the meat. No, did you wash your hands after you touched that chicken? Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because it's all over it. your phone now. Because you know, that could give you salmonella. Vinny, I, I didn't touch the The last time I touched chicken, I washed my hands with soap and did not okay. touch the chicken again. I pointed right. at the lemon. I didn't touch it. Okay. Yeah, I was about to say you're touching your phone. You got you got the, no. the chicken all over you. Because look, no. I'm not a prude. I, I get in there with the meat. As you know, I've skinned a lot of animals. Oh, me too. No, 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 no. But I... Not with not with raw chicken. Yeah, I here's what I wanted to do. I wanted to just invent some sort of veggie side dish while we were here talking. So I told him to bring back stuff. So I think I think I want to do the green beans and cilantro and basil, maybe lemon cream. Let's see what happens. Anna. Stop messing around. I, have, I also have chicken broth. Mm. I'm going to start messing around. Oh, yeah. you know what I was you know why I took that chicken broth out? I have a thing of homemade broth because I always have that going. If you feel like your chicken is going to be too dry, mm -hmm. do your first 20 minutes. You can you can ladle a scoop of this into the bottom where the onions are to kind of get the juices going. Because sometimes your chicken will cook off and the fat will evaporate and then you don't wind up with a, lo a lot of basting juices. So just uh, want to put that suggestion out there. I need an onion. How about, I'm just going to pick these beans, but let me tell you something. Let me ask you a question from Bob Zimmer, our friend. All right. Who I am sending him a, a eat happy apron. I have a question for you too, Anna. Yeah. Now I'm a, we're going to do your question to me first. Look, I have one note here. I got one one note. I'm going to be asking you a question. Oh yeah. Okay. Oh wait. This is this is Lauren, and he. I got to let him talk me into posting that. Eat happy. Oh, he's nice. He's wearing the thing. He's looking good, but he. Guns I was like, welcome to the gun, gun show. Yeah, welcome to the gun show. He was flexing though, right? That that's a flex. Oh yeah, oh, yeah, he's flexing for sure. Okay, he ain't okay. walking around with those pythons just natural, right? He's got to flex it up a little bit. Oh my god, um, here it is. Bob Zimmer wants to know: Can you ask Vinny on the podcast about the keto measurements and why in the morning they tend to be lowest and then in the afternoon they seem highest? What should be the goal for the afternoon number in order to maintain solid ketosis? Thanks. There is no goal number and everyone is different. Boy, yeah. thank you, Bob, man. So many people ask me this on the phone calls. It's like, man, when I went to bed, I, you know, I had, you know, 2.8 or 3.1. And, and what we're talking about is millimolars. It's the amount of ketones found in your blood at any given time. The, the, the um, you know, just the percentage of ketones running through your blood. Um, for example, I was talking about this on Clubhouse this morning when I woke up. Um, I've been measuring, I'm measuring this week, I don't measure all the time, because I'm always in ketosis. But I want to make sure I'm in deep ketosis for a while, because I'm getting ready to go do some climbing with the billionaire Don Coddington, some some mountain climbing. And I'm going to do, you know, I want to make sure I'm in good ketosis, because the only thing I'm going to have in my pack besides water and ultra salt is my little ultra fats here. And um one of the climbs we're going to do could take the better part of 15 hours. So we're going to be on our feet for 15 hours. That's a long time to go without food when you're exercising at that level. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm checking my ketones right now, right? So I've been waking up in the morning anywhere. The other day, I was just under one. I was 0.9. Most days I wake up 1.0, 1.2. Today I woke up, I was at 1.4. Um, oh, that's pretty high for waking up. That's very high. for. But, but I've been I've been going I like 0. 0.5 to 0. 0.7 when I wake up. And yeah, I feel pretty good about that. Usually on any given day, if I just check, I'll be at 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8. But I've really been eating almost no carbs whatsoever, meaning I've 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 been just eating meat, basically meat right. and, and fish and eggs, meat, fish and eggs. Okay. I'm, I'm eating around the clock and um you know, taking my ultra fat sometimes before a workout or after a workout. Today, I did a workout on my bike for two hours. I was just talking about this. I was on a spinner in zone two for two hours and five minutes to be exact. And um, about an hour after I got off, my ketones were at 2.5 or 6. Um, so here's, here's the best answer I could give, Bob. Mm -hmm. And this is a roundabout. And this is why, folks, you should never co compare your ketone levels or any of your levels with any of your Shut friends up. or your bro science buddies or anything. And here's why. 
your body will make what you need at the time. So if you're not using a lot of ketones, your body won't make a lot of ketones. So when you're sleeping, you know, your body, you know, basically, your meta your, your basal metabolic rate is at a different rate than it is when you're awake. So your body's going to make very few ketones, and you're going to use what you're making, right? Okay. Your ketosis. When you wake up, um, if you stay fasted for a while and you start moving around, maybe you go for a walk, take your dog for a walk, take a leak, this kind of thing, you might notice a very short time after that, your ketone level might be higher because your body went, oh, wait, I need more energy. I better convert more fat into this butyrate, this ketone, uh, so that, you know, Bob can use it. That makes sense. And then Bob might stop doing the exercise and sit down for a while and your body's still making extra ketones for a minute. And you might find that it's higher at that point. I remember sometimes, you know, getting out of my kayak when I was doing a lot of ocean kayaking, and I might be out there for three or four hours. And the only thing I would have is, um, um, you know, Villa Capelli olive oil while I was out because right. I could just drink like a little vial or whatever. Yeah, just to have something while I was out there and take some ultra salt and all that kind of stuff. And then I would drive back home from Mother's Beach, which could take an hour. So my body would still make ketones for that hour while I'm sitting in my car driving back to the valley. Mm, mm -hmm. And every now and then I would check my ketones and that would always be the highest ketones I would ever see. Because right. I'm not exercising anymore. I'm sitting in a car for at least an hour, an hour and 20 minutes on the weekends. And the key, your body just keeps making the ketones. It hasn't slowed down yet. Sometimes I would prick my finger and check it just to see what it would be. And it would right. be like 4.6, 4.8. But wow. that doesn't mean that you're in any more ketosis than you used to be. I'm going to give you another example, Anna. When you mm -hmm. first um, started doing ke ketosis, way back mm -hmm. in the day, and you mm -hmm. had the pee strips. At first, you right. would walk in with this urine-covered strip and go, Yeah, and put it in this. your face. Mm -hmm. Deep purple. Look at this. I'm sure Look the, at more, the more purple you have on that stick, the more ketones you have in your urine, right? Right. And then a few months later, Anna would come in and go, I'm doing everything exactly the same. It's barely purple. Yes, That's because right. your body is not pissing off. It always hovered at the, at the darker pink. That's where it right. always hovered. Yeah. So it doesn't matter where it is, whether it's 0.7 or 1.5 or 2.5 or whatever. As long as you're, you're finding ketones in your blood, you're still in ketosis. Right. And now right. if you find yourself at... 0.1 or 0.2, and sometimes you're ebbing out and coming in, you might want to start looking at what you're doing, right? Maybe you're having too much dairy product, too much, too much lactose can, can be a problem. Um, sometimes people start adding in too much fruit, you know, it'll be cherry season. And everyone sure. loves the cherries and you know, too much cher cherries are good. And you go, I oh, he says they can have cherries and I'm having cherries. I'm, I'm putting it with heavy cream. So it's got to be good. You would be shocked at how you know, your liver keeps score. You could tell yourself anything you want to tell yourself, but your liver is keeping score. It's right. just the way it works. Right. So, Bob, whether you're at 0. 0.7, you know, usually when I wake up in the morning, and I see 0. 0.7, 0. 0.8, 0. 0.6. 0. That's what I normally see. Right. Uh, especially if I had some cheese at night after dinner or something, we're sitting around television, I might Serena will bring a little charcuterie board out. So I might have a couple of pieces of cheese. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll notice it'll be a little lower in the morning, right? If it's right. triple cream brie and a couple of olives, it might stay steady. Again, it's not good to eat late at night anyway. I don't right. have this. You have to stop three hours before you go to bed. But it's not a bad idea to stop a couple of hours. Just let your stomach clear out. Let, let everything yeah. clear out. You don't need to eat that close to bedtime. Um, so, yeah, you know, and look, I, I remember looking at my, my grandfather, Mike Tortorich, and, and his brothers, Joe and Frank. And none of these guys had an ounce of fat on them. They died lean, right? Mm -hmm. And, of course, they, they all grew up during the Depression. There were Depression-era babies and the whole thing, and Sometimes at night, I, you know, my Uncle Joe would just eat like an egg. One thing, and I would say, Uncle Joe, it's just one egg. He goes, that's good enough. I'm good. I'm good to go. Yeah. It's just one fried egg. He would just eat that. That's all he needed. The guy 
he was lean when he died. My uncle Frank was, well, he was skinny and lean. None of these guys had an ounce of fat on them. And by yeah. the way, they never went to a gym or anything. They exercised. They, they, right, they, right. They kept doing crops even when they got older. And when I say crops, they would have four and five acre gardens right behind their house. They would work it. They had one old tractor, one old farm all they would all use to, to, to crack the land and everything. And, and they would plant their vegetables. But most of the family would go pick that stuff. You know, we were all working in that little garden, at four or five or six acres or whatever they did. So when you look at that and you go, OK, these people, yeah, they, they had a slice of bread every now and then. They, they would have a slice of bread with breakfast or lunch. But you never saw them snacking. You never saw them eat anything from a carton. The only thing I ever saw my grandfather eat from a carton was on occasion, he would have a scoop of ice cream, a small scoop. That was it. Mm -hmm. Everything else was meat and eggs and this kind of thing. These guys never gained weight. They never had a weight problem. How, how do you make it into your 80s? My grandfather went to 93. Right. 93. The guy was ripped when he was 93. Never worked out a day in his life. Ate one certain way and kept his mind. Everything was strong until the bitter end. Right? So, yeah. You know, think about that, Bob. You could be like my grandfather when you get older. Um, how are you doing over there? And well, tell I'm me. Doing great. I doing sliced that. onions thinly, and I'm not. This knife is catching weird, so I did it really slowly because I didn't want to cut myself. I sliced the onions thinly because <clears throat> the idea is that you often want to cut your vegetables to be kind of the same size. If you're cooking long green beans, you want long slices of onions because if you cut little chopped onions and you're eating green beans and it's hard to get everything on your fork at once. Does that make sense? Right. Yeah, if absolutely. I were to chop the green beans into bite-sized pieces, then I would chop the onions into bite-sized pieces. So I just put some salt and pepper and a little garlic powder on there. And I'm thinking of doing some Dijon and lemon and basil on these to go with the chicken. Anna, just, just for the audience, uh, can you read the ingredients in that Dijon mustard mm -hmm. bottle? I want to make sure oh, it's God. good enough. See if Anna got the good stuff. Organic distilled vinegar, water, organic mustard seed, sea salt, organic turmeric, organic spices. Good. Can we say the brand? Let's give them sure. a little it's, it's Cadia Organic. I mean, it's this is a new private label brand I've been seeing at, at stores lately. Okay. Um, I'm sure somebody else makes this and they've private labeled it and got it for, cause they make it now a tomato sauce, a peanut butter, a, you know, they make a lot of, right, right, right. Yeah. Some of the things I like, I don't like their peanut butter. Just saying. Well, you shouldn't be having peanut butter anyway. Um, I know. Anna, you know, I, yeah, it, you know, well, mustard used to be a safe haven, too. but sometimes you'll see mustard. I have seen. Oh, you have to read the mustard. labels, you guys. Yeah. My, they, they my favorite Dijon mustards now have stuff. Um, Worcestershire sauce now has molasses or something stupid yeah. in it. Um, it's so dumb. It's like, I don't it's like it. they just don't think that people can survive without their precious sugar added to everything. It's crazy. It's annoying. It's just it's, crazy. It's annoying. Yeah, it is. Um, but I'm, but I, I can never have too much basil, so I'm picking all these leaves off of here. And what are you going to do with that, Anna? I'm going to, here's what I like to do with basil. I like to slice them into what's called the chiffonade. So when you, especially when you have nice big leaves of basil, right? Yeah. You stack, you stack them, right? You see me stacking them here? Yeah. All facing one direction. And you roll them up into like a, like you're rolling a, a tobacco, you're rolling a tobacco joint, right? Yeah. And then you just cut them into little, there we go, like this. Cut them into ribbons called chiffonade. Hmm. Well, I bet you it nice. smells good in the kitchen very... right now. Between yeah. what you got in that pot. It smells, it smells real good. So I'm going to do that. Thing. Oh, should we do sauce 101? Yeah, yeah. That was my different sauces. And uh, I want to talk about your sauces here. Um, as you know, on Instagram, I, I, I put up my little, uh, I use your puttanesca and I put it with the uh, shrimp. And, Love uh, it. Thank oh you for doing God. that. It was deli I, I, don't, I really appreciate Thank you it. for coming up with that product. I was licking the plate on that meal. Now uh, you can check my Instagram and you'll see. I have to say I the puttanesca is my favorite, but I don't eat the dairy. Right. But people love the pink crema. That's their favorite. We well, sold out a Pasadena of both of those flavors, by the way. The guy I'm, was like, uh oh, 
we need to order more. I was like, yeah, I try to tell you. I'm going to do a shrimp and uh, and scallop thing with the uh, pink sauce. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to do something like that. Uh, so, Anna, you have three sauces now. You, you got the, uh, yes. the pink. You got the This is getting nice and caramelized. You can see yeah, that. Yeah, that looks good. I'm going to throw, I put the water back in there so it steams a little bit. So I'm going to put some basil, I'm sorry, the mustard in there. Yes, okay. So we have the OG marinara, which right. you know I came out with a new recipe PDF that has a bunch of new recipes that you can make with any of the, the things. I just wanted people sure. to have ideas of how to make weeknight meals. Um, so we have the regular OG marinara. I'm doing about a tablespoon of this. Dijon. And I decided to make my puttanesca recipe and the pink crema next because those to me are in the same vein, but diverse enough where most people aren't going to doctor their marinara and make their own puttanesca with it. And most right. people aren't going to doctor their marinara and make a crema with it. By the way, my puttanesca is called that because there are many lore and, you know, stories and rumors about, I'm going to toss all this stuff. I'm going to put some chicken broth in there. Uh, there are many lore stories, but one of them being basically because puta means whore. Burger or whore. Yeah. And the story being, actually, I'm going to taste this broth and make sure it's still good. It was, it was the whore pasta. It was cheap. They could just. It was the whore pasta. But then there's another version of it, which is the puttanesca is supposed to be savory and spicy and pungent, right? Mm -hmm. And it, the wives made the sauce so that their husbands would eat it and they would stink and the whorehouses wouldn't want to have anything to do with them. Whore houses don't work that way, Anna. Yeah, I know, I know, but I thought that that was a funny story. I was like, well, that's funny, wise. Yeah, that's uh, you know, I, mm. I would have to go with it was it was a cheap, you know, you, you cook down the tomatoes, you throw it on top of pasta, and yeah. uh, that, that's what the putas would eat. Well, and I gotta say, so basically, it's it's a red sauce, and you add olive caper. Uh, we had oregano, we put red pepper flake in there for some warmth at the end. I didn't want it to be yeah. too spicy. But a traditional puttanesca is made with anchovies. We did not put the anchovy in there because people get freaked out by that. So not this guy. Made it, no, I know you wouldn't be. But we made it so that uh, it tastes just as good as a traditional anchovy laden. It's so good. It's so savory and so satisfying. Yeah, it really is. I just put some broth on there. You can hear it sizzling. Now, oh, I got to stir in this Dijon that I put in there. Jesus, I'm a mess today. Um, and then I'm gonna cover this. Can you see that? It's gonna be real good. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm my mouth it's, is watering just this watching smells, what you're doing there. This smells so good. But we need to get these green beans to steam a little bit. So I'm gonna turn it down low and get the green beans a little softer. Yeah. I don't like green beans too firm. I like, I like a little crunch, a little snap to them, but not a whole lot. I just had an idea. Go I on. Put pan pancetta in there. You should have done that first. Cook it down. Go, yeah. Throw throw some pancetta in there. See, Anna, I always cook my pancetta first. I always give it a head start because I like it. I like to get that grease on the bottom and, and crispy and the whole deal. Where's my pancetta? Did I use is it already? already cubed oh no, up? there it is. You no, I got, I got it. I'll cut it. I'll cut it. Everything's going to be fine, Vinny. Everything's going to be fine. So I'm that's the, Puchinesca. the pink crema is, is like the marinara, but it adds uh, Parmesan and heavy cream. Yeah. And it's just the right balance because you don't want it to be too cheesy and dairy. But I will say this. If you make my chicken parm, but you make it with the pink crema, it's like an extra layer of parm goodness. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. It's... Oh, look at that, man. You see, Do I, you see this thing? Yeah. It's oh, pancetta, man. by the way, it's just Italian cured bacon. Yes, she's pancetta. She's got a big old slab of, of bacon there and she's chopping it up. Oh, Anna. Anna. Oh, my God. <laughs> put more. That's not enough. You need to put more. I know, I know, I know, but I want to just get it going. You know what I mean? Yeah. I want to get some pieces in there. It's kind of tough to cut. And folks, don't be scared to touch your pancetta. Use your hand. Yeah, you can touch. You can touch the pancetta. That's fine. Yeah, I, I love what you do. By the way, I roast Brussels sprouts with this. You know that's my secret 
way of getting people to eat their vegetables is you put a pork product in there. Yeah, we we will mix bacon in and, and yeah. do it that way. It's uh, mm -hmm. uh, I love doing it a pasta. little. That was tough, but it cooked down. See, look at that. That's basically just like oh. all fat. Oh, mm -hmm. look at that! And what kind of knife? Smells so good. Here? Uh, this is a Japanese one, Miyabi, and uh, I was just sharpening it a second ago. Oh, there's the timer for the chicken. Now, I was going to ask you a question. I think this actually might be enough, Vinny. I know you want me to put more, but this is actually enough. Yeah, you can never put enough bacon. Well, I'll put a little more in here. There you go. I, I like this. Knife was perfect, but now it's like catching kind of funny, and I don't want to. I want to be really careful because I have cut myself so many times. We call them the brand we like. We have a um, we have a knife, uh, a couple of them made by Global. Oh, okay. I need to get, I should get a knife sponsor. Is you, what you, I should. Get. you should. You um, should. I'm, I'm, loving, I'm loving the global knives. Um, Anna, don't forget you, your thing went off. Yeah. Let me get take the chicken out. Oh, wait, you okay, got to wash so your hands first. You touch the pan. I just washed my hands with soap. Right. You didn't see that? No, I didn't. You do it so fast. <laughs> I'm over here. I'm worried. Anna's touching it. It's going to cook down. Be delicious. I you can actually finish that with cream too, or coconut cream if you don't do oh, the dairy. I, I would so put cream on that. Yeah, you should. Okay, let me put this away. Let me get this chicken going. Um, we did the sauce 101. I feel like I had another question for you from the internet, and now I'm, I can't I'm remember. fascinated with what you're doing over there. And so you had that chicken on 450, you said. 425, and see because we already kind of got this little sear on the skin. Yeah. Look at that. But it's not cooked on the inside. So we're going to turn the heat down so it doesn't overcook. By the way, my new oven is like 10 times stronger than my other oven. Okay, um, so what, you, what did you I'm knock it down it. to? baste it. 350. Okay. By the way, I don't even think this works anymore. I need to get a new one. It does. I don't hear any like suction happening. Yeah. Well, see if it works. Oh, <sighs> mercy. So explain to people how you're going to baste, Anna. What are you doing? You're taking the juice from the can bottom. Can you see me? Can you see me basting it? Let's see. Yeah. Well, it's well, kind of working. Pull it into the picture just a little more there, Anna. There you go. You see that? Mm-hmm. Getting that juice up there. Mm-hmm. Just baste it a little bit. There yeah. are some people who argue that basting doesn't work. I think it makes a nice even it coating. It a and nice tan. Yeah, the nice lemons thing. are starting to go. I'm just yeah. actually going to kind of move them down so that we cook the rest of this skin in the front. Nice. Why am I trying to do this one handed? That's not going to work. Okay. That's a big We're going thing. back in. Now, I'm going to let this go for about, oh, I want to show you this real quick. I'm going to let this go probably for too long. We'll, we'll be done podcasting, but I want to show you guys a cheap, analog meat thermometer it's very it's this is i've had this probably 25 years it's awesome do you, you have a brand it, Anna? what brand is this it? is it's KitchenAid. all right heard of those and you see how the leg is sticking out and there's mm -hmm. the breast right there in the leg you're going to plunge it in and take the temperature not yet because it'll release juices i'm not going to do it right now but that's where you plunge it in and take the temperature after it's been going for about an hour ish so we have okay. 20 minutes right so i'm gonna so set my we got another 40 minutes, minutes to go there mm -hmm. right, to go. at 350 and then and only then will i check it and if it gets to 180 we done good but so, i have a feeling we'll be done with the show by then yeah see. we're already at almost an hour yeah this show flew by do you guys know about villa capelli olive oil you want me to tell them all about it? I think you should. Let me see if it is the stuff in stock. Somebody got dented cans the other day. I, I, I was, at this point, I will take a dented can happily. Happily. Oh, it's coming. It's coming so soon. Yeah. But go go to the three liter tin and tap that and put your uh, email address in. Is it back in stock, Anna? Because I'm, I'm out. No, you have to put your email address in. Well, look at this. Look what I saved. I've got like maybe a quarter of a cup mm. in there. And then whatever's in here. Maybe maybe a quarter of a cup. That's it. 
and I'm completely I'm in out trouble. Of belly. I, I, I passed trouble. I had to go buy something else. I need Villa Capelli, folks. It's upsetting. Yeah. It's Look, upsetting they, what they, it is. The reason they run out is they will not serve an olive oil before it's time. Villa That's Capelli, right. best olive oil on the planet. This is a health food, folks. People always go, Vinny, which vitamins do you take? And the first thing I'll say is olive oil, and they'll start laughing. Oh, yeah, Mr. Italian. No, it's a, it's a health food. It's one of the healthiest things next to fish oil that you could put in your body, probably just as good as taking fish oil. Um, they oh, both my God. Look, things. there's like none Anna, left. That's all that. you have. That's all right, Anna, hang on. You, let me tell you what to do. You got to get a knife, not, not a knife that you care about. You got to cut that Should top off. Can you a can off. opener? If, if a can opener works, you see, I just take a knife. I, I, I take my um, boy knife. I'm so upset right now. And I just cut it and you'll get, you'll get another like three or four or five ounces out. Because it feels like there's something in there, but then when I tried to pour it, did you see that? Yeah, let's see if you can open or work. We might be uh -huh. giving everybody a hint as to what to do. Is it working? She can't see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Anna, oh, you wait. just gave me a new way to do it if that worked. It's just like, it needs to say hitched in, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, the corners are gonna be an issue. And yeah, but get that, like around the corner. Yeah. This is how much Villa Capelli means to us, folks. She is literally there with a can opener trying to open this three liter tin. What I do is I just take it out of my shop. I take a Bowie knife. That's a big, uh, thick hunting knife. And I yeah, jab it in and then I work it around. My, my Bowie knives are sharp. And um, I'll get another two or three ounces out, out of every can. I will say this is going to be very jaggedy, so you're going to have to watch your hands. Yeah, to do folks, this. yeah. It, it, don't be careful when you do this because that's that's the other thing I should have said. I'm used to working with with metal and what have you. So my AirPod fell out. Um, that's how intensely I'm doing this. Yeah, she is. Th this is an Italian trying to get every drop out of it. Yeah, you know, just like that's Stevie Ray Vaughan said too. at the beginning of the show, the life by the drop. Um, Villa Capelli, folks, you want to save ten percent. Every single time you go there, put in promo code Vinny, V-I-N-N-I-E, no wimpy Y, promo code Vinny. This olive oil means so much to me that when I had to mix my um, vitamin D, my D3 over at purevitaminclub.com with something, they said you need to mix it with an oil. I'm going to try the pizza cutter. This is like an Italian on Italian crime. Yeah. Let, uh, you're going to cut your finger. A pizza cutter is not sharp enough. This is a really sharp pizza cutter. Anna, you don't have it, like a bowie work. knife. You don't have a bowie knife. No, I wish I had more knives. Here, let me try a paring knife. No, should you're gonna ruin I try it. this. You might ruin it. Yeah. Anna, you gotta go. You gotta go in through a side. I'm worried you're gonna hurt yourself. No. Let Lauren take it out to the garage and work on it. Anyway, Villa Capelli olive oil. I use it in my D3 supplement over at purevitaminclub.com. It's in the Anna, sauce too. Anna uses it in the sauces over at Eat Happy Kitchen. This is the real deal. Villa Capelli, that's probably why they can't keep it in stock. We're running them out of stock, buying it for it's our definitely why. Look, I'm sweating. Yeah. Keep All it right, in. Well, I'm going to work can, on that later. Yeah. I'm going to show you how I do it. Okay. Um, so much for my decanting live on camera. Anna, keep talking. I'm going to show you the knife I use to. I'm going to go get it. I okay, have that, go I get your knife. knife. Yeah. Let's let's, let's check on this. Uh, where's my? Okay, I'm going to check on this green bean creation, green bean Dijon basil onion creation. I did not put lemon in it. I thought maybe the Dijon might make it acidy enough. Ooh. Okay. I think that's ready. Let's see. Oh, let's, uh, and of course, if I was making this and my timing was better and I put the chicken in the oven sooner. Oh, that was really good. Let me put that on a plate. Vinny, this, I think the green beans are done. I can almost smell them all the way over here. I was, I need to taste and see. That's the other thing. When you're cooking, as long as you're not putting raw meat in your mouth, definitely yeah. taste as you go along. Oh, I do. Uh, Anna, yeah. here, here's the type of knife you need. I'm going to show you this right here. Oh, look at that. 
Oh, I can almost smell it that pancetta. So good. You see what I have here, Anna? It's a big. That's thing. what I need. That's it's, what I need. It's my K bar, it, folks. You, if, if you know, it's you know, get a K bar. Oh my god! Every, every family easy. should have one of these. This is so good. I use this for hunting. I use it for everything. Mine actually has my name on it. I don't know if you can see that. Um, but yeah, these are great knives. They hold up. They're made by the Cutco company. They were made uh, during the Korean War for the United States really? Army. Yeah. And uh, they said you can use this for um, skinning, hunting, killing, and opening cans. So it's a big, thick blade. It's a heavy carbon blade. And uh, boy, does it do a job. Uh, so get one of these. Everyone should have one of these as part of your household. Um, I have a bunch yeah, of boy knives to here to eat use this. this, this is one, I just invented this. I should type it up. You should, because I can smell it through the computer. That's okay. It. That's refresh. It was onion sliced thinly. See? Yeah. Onion sliced thinly in Villa Valley olive oil. Got it nice and soft. Meanwhile, I just, um, Pick the green bean so the ref end was off. By the way, I only picked the one ref end of the green bean. I ate the other end. I don't care. Put the green beans in. Toss it around with salt, pepper, a little bit of garlic powder. And then put the cover on and let it uh, start to steam the green beans. And it continues to cook the onions, right? Take off the cover. I added about a tablespoon of Dijon, a ladle of chicken broth, and the pancetta I added late. You could have started, I could have started with the pancetta, but maybe it would have been overcooked. You can burn it. You don't want to burn you, the pancetta, you, you so maybe can. I did it at the right time. So it turned out well. It's freaking amazing. And I, I want some of that right now. I know. I wish you were that. here. I wish I was there too. Look at that. Oh my God. Folks, go check out the video. Bite. You're not going to believe what she made here. This is pretty amazing. It's so simple. Oh, and the, I'm sorry. The, ba the, the, like, maybe like, what was it? Like 12 to 15 basil leaves cut in little ribbons. That's right. And that's all cooked down and it just flavors the whole thing. Oh, pancetta and basil steaming up with the villa capelli, the onions. You don't... <sighs> By the way, I was thinking to finish it with cream. It doesn't need cream. The Dijon yeah. kind of made it creamy. And the pancetta, the fat from the pancetta, you know? Yeah. So I'm going to finish my chicken. Check the temperature. Let the chicken stand for a little bit. Carve it. And then you can use the juices on the chicken. Eat that chicken skin. And um, that's our dinner tonight. I've made it. So, Anna, I want to go back. Okay. Uh, we talked about the puttanesca, but we didn't talk about the other two sauces. And, and uh, No, we kind of did. But how... Th all right. So I can't stop eating. I have to put this aside. Yeah. I'm just going to eat this whole show. Nothing wrong with that. The pink, the pink crema is the marinara, but with heavy cream and fresh grated parm added into it. And mm -hmm. it is, it is delicious. It is just the right amount of decadent, but it's not too overbearing. That's yeah. the whole thing. I want everything to be yummy, but I don't want it to be overbearing, you know? No, I think everything's got a taste. A good medium. It's 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 that it's, it's it's spot on. Look, yeah. I'm a pink sauce guy. It's spot on. By the way, they don't. You know, we're so used to having these heavy, fatty, you know, sauces here. These bastardized versions of sauces, yeah. but it's not how. You know, well, first of all, they don't do giant jars of sauce over in Italy, but. I wanted it to be nice and nuanced. And somebody wrote something today too. I want everyone to know that Villa Capelli is in the sauces and it's not oxidized. That's a ridiculous statement. And I think it's oxidized in the process and the lids are BPA free. There's no BPA. People just like to yap, 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 yap. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. But also too, you don't have to buy the sauces. I have the recipes for free up on my site. Go make yeah. them. Yeah. That would, and by the way, people would tell, say I'm very dumb to do that. And my spice mixes that are coming out, oh, I had to turn this off. My spice mixes that are coming out are in the cookbooks. You don't have to buy them from me, but you'll want to once you taste them. And have we done this show? I think we did this show. Okay, folks, you know what to do.
we all go shopping on Amazon. Before you go to Amazon, please go to VinnyTartarys.com. Click through the banner. It puts coal on a fire, gets my train down the track. Anna Vicino has Eat Happy Kitchen, where you could get the marinara, you can get the puttanesca, and the, the pink crema. You get all of those there. Also, if you want to figure out what to do with those sauces, once you get them, get the books. Right. Eat Happy and Eat Happy too. Go check out everything she has at AnnaVolcino.com. She's giving it away for free over there. So I don't want to hear people, I don't know what to do, NSG, low carb. Go to the site. Go to AnnaVolcino.com. I also have a 31-day meal plan there based on Eat Happy, Eat Happy too. But the first four days are all the free. So you can at least get four days in, and then there's literally tons more recipes on my site. So just go make the food. And I let me say something, too. I'm staring at these. You know, the herbs are in season. Yeah. Your, the herb gardens are going crazy. These are from the store. I actually had to pull my cilantro because something happened and it grew up like four feet tall. It was weird. Um, so that's why I bought cilantro. And my basil has not grown like it's supposed to grow. But my rosemary, my thyme, and my parsley are growing like crazy. Parsley, sage, rosemary. And yeah, I'm not looking it up. I'm not doing it. I'm not doing it. <laughs> And I'm going to tell you, use up your, just throw herbs in everything that you're making every night for dinner so that you get those herbs in there. They're good for you. Folks, that's go all I want to say. Use your herbs. I don't want any of you to go, oh, I had to throw away a whole thing of cilantro. Don't do no. that. Use them. Herbs are good for you. Go do it. Um, so there you have it. Now, and I'm going to turn off the video. Okay. Uh, so I, want to, I want to eat this food. So. Yeah, so you can eat it. You can chomp away because uh, so to the video folks, we if you want to hear the rest of the podcast, we may play a little Stevie Ray. We may play a little Motley Crue. Who knows? Maybe we'll play some Shania Twain. You don't know. So if you want to hear the last couple of minutes of the podcast, you're going to have to go to iTunes or somewhere else if you're watching this on YouTube.